at uh, a reasonable pace. And uh, Rangers trying to force that pace, but uh, Dortmund keeping possession. Found, yeah. What I found amazing was they couldn't see each other in those grey shirts, but they had an awful lot of trouble picking up those rather bright red and white striped shirts. <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, in fact, Alex Ferguson gave his excuse on film to the Match of the Day cameras, but unfortunately, when we approached Manchester United for permission to use that, <laughs> they refused. But then we happily realised that it happened on Southampton property and their veto was worthless. So, Alex? Straightforward, the players don't like the grey strip. Simple as that. I think they find difficulty picking each other out. We had to change it. Yeah, according to manager Alex Ferguson, grey things are invisible. <laughs> So apparently it's just luck that planes manage to find aircraft carriers in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> if anyone would actually like to buy one of those grey Manchester United shirts, I'm selling them at only $39.99. <laughs> OK, Gary, Rory and uh, Five Bellies. Um, <laughs> your action features another United. <laughs> you don't mind if I call you that, do you? No, no, you come. Okay. Your, your, uh, your action you features another United, Air, shown here losing pitifully last season to the mighty East Fife. Watch out for a real quality build-up here. <laughs> Scotland's goal of the year. Are you being sarcastic about that goal? So I think that was a great goal. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't hit, hit them that far because it used to hurt my toe. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't say it as well as he would have done. He couldn't hit them that, hit them that far. <laughs> <laughs> you bald twit. <laughs> For those of you at home, every time I say twit, it means... Team playing there. Which one? Air departed. <laughs> <laughs> had it been out with me drinking like before? Sorry, you have had more <laughs> sleep facts. I can't. <laughs> We've got a foreign person on the show. <laughs> Nice of them to come on the show to be really cool because a lot of um, quiz shows like Have I Got News for You, if someone drops out, they're replacing with a tub of lard. <laughs> <laughs> good. So who else drops out then? <laughs> <laughs> Any more ideas? Something on the kit again. Like they were playing in that black kit. And... I'm going to give you the points for that because you got the black kit and. Jimmy might have got the rest of it, but I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you believe it? It was the colour of the team strip again, in this case, black. Let's hear manager Gordon Dial's excuse. Well, I changed them when I first came here because they were all black. They were so depressing looking, and when the players went out the pitch, they looked like undertakers, and the football they were playing at the time was absolute murder, so I decided to change it. <laughs> Actually, the real reason that they had to change their kit was that they put them on a hot wash and they turned grey and obviously just disappeared. <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, David's team have three and Gary's team have three. <laughs> round two is our injury board. Each team chooses a number from the board which will reveal a well-known sporting celebrity and an object. We'd like to know how the object shown injured the person and prevented them from competing. David Lee and Alistair, if you'd like to pick a number. Um, be nice to get into double figures again, so uh, 12. OK, tennis player, German tennis player Michael Stieck and a pair of underpants. How did the pants prevent Stieck from playing tennis? Starch. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that the pants were too loose, right? And every time the umpire shouted out new balls, he took it as an insult. <laughs> no? No, no I'm funny, no. <laughs> Alistair's desperately trying to find a way of getting Kevin Keegan into the set. <laughs> Isn't this the story where the underpants were found in Steffi Graf's bedroom and her boyfriend took violent exception? Yeah, and he shoved the tennis racket up his arse and he's just getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> I think what actually happened here is... Cos I remember hearing Virginia Wade say this. She sounded a bit like Kevin Keegan when she did it. <laughs> <laughs> just as well, eh? <laughs> I think Michael has got a terrible injury because he was trying to put his pants on 
and uh, he got his leg caught in one of the leg holes and he slipped and twisted his knee or his ankle or something else very badly indeed when he fell out of his pants. <laughs> He's correct for three points. <laughs> The answer is that Michael Stieck suffered an ankle injury after tripping while putting on his pants <laughs> during the Milan Open earlier this year. Apparently they were a pair of grey pants, so he couldn't see them properly. <laughs> Germans, eh? You might keep winning the World Cup, you may have a higher standard living than us, but you can't put your pants on properly, <laughs> can you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Gary, five bellies and eight bellies. Um, <laughs> Would you like to pick a number, please? Uh, five bellies. Yeah, that's Arsenal midfielder Steve Morrow and his clubmate Tony Adams. How did the latter injure the forward ma? Uh, did he drive him home? <laughs> <laughs> I was there that day. It was the day I'd just finished running the 1993 London Marathon. Sorry, it was 1992 London Marathon, but it was in 1993 that it happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, tone, and they were celebrating um, Arsenal's 2 one victory over Sheffield Wednesday. And I think Morrow went up to celebrate and Tony Adams ignored him because he was wearing a grey shirt. <laughs> and uh, he slipped off the back and broke his clavicle. Absolutely correct. Oh. For three points, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the answer is that after Morrow scored the winning goal in the 1993 League Cup final, Adams hoisted him in triumph and then dropped him on the pitch, breaking his arm. Apparently, he was holding the cup in one hand and had Steve Morrow in the other. And when someone came up and offered him a double brandy, so something had to go, obviously. <laughs> Gaza was asked about this as well, wasn't he? Gaza, I don't know if you know this, fact, but Paul was asked about it, and he said, uh, well, I cannot say what all the fuss is about myself, like, you know, saying that Tony Adams is an alcoholic. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, you know, this here, he says that he's an alcoholic because he has, like, ten pints of beer and, uh, you know, six whiskies and a tequila, uh, you know, of a night. And, well, for me and five bellies, that's just a lunchtime table, isn't it? <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, to be fair, Tony Adams has actually had a drink problem for many years. Every time he went to the bar, Paul Merson was in front of him. <laughs> Tony Adams happily now attends regular meetings where people with drink problems get together and discuss it. They're called Arsenal training sessions. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, I think we've just got time to see those goals again. Fuck <laughs> out! The Chevalier! Leticia Shirley! Worth the price of the licence fee on their own, aren't they? <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have six and Gary's team have six. <laughs> In our next round, we play some strange sporting clips and ask our teams, what's going on? We've called this round, what's going on? <laughs> David Lee and Alistair, <clears throat> this first clip's for you. And believe it or not, it's got something to do with cricket. <laughs> That's Merv Hughes, isn't it? Mm. Merv, yep. Yeah. That's his mate, five moustaches. <laughs> <laughs> five bellies is an odd nickname, isn't it? Because if I had a nickname mentioning something, I'd want to be called Five Penises. <laughs> so then, then, I know at least then, five people <clears throat> have called you a prick. Well. <laughs> Thanks for that one. Yeah, Merv used to do all those uh, sort of exercises in, around in front of the boundary there, and everyone used to copy him, 20,000 people in the Great South stand behind him. Yeah, but well, the game's that interesting, isn't it? <laughs> 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 it is a dull game, though, isn't it, don't you think? Cricket. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to check it out here, right? Now, I don't need to be hurt by this. All the people in the audience have been cricket is really dull and boring, say, yo, one, two, three. Yeah! I think my game's... Is anyone out there? <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching clips of you when you used to play in the old days. <laughs> and I think I know where you were going wrong. You were playing... You should play in front of the wicket. <laughs> yeah. okay. Funny you should mention that. I've seen clips of you in your old days as well. And I think you should have been in the audience, not in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> was it a Merv Hughes look-alike contest? Did it... Was it so difficult? Three points, thank you. <laughs> It's only hard for you, <laughs>
It was, in fact, the occasion in 1990 when an Australian bar ran a Merv Hughes lookalike competition, judged by the man himself. Here he is, congratulating the winner. That's him on the right. Or possibly the one on the left, I'm not sure. <laughs> Merv Hughes, incidentally, lives with his mum. No, oh, there's a surprise. <laughs> The rest of the Australian side were also at the bar, dressed as a Red Indian, a construction worker, that sort of thing. <laughs> <clears throat> of course, the England team know how to have a good time as well. The Mike Atherton look-alike competition went on till nearly 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and just to remind you, England are due to play Australia next year in a series of one-day matches. The first test, the second test, <laughs> that sort of thing. OK, Gary and 13 bellies. Um, <laughs> you may recognise this part-time sportsman. It's the boy Windsor. No, no, the, the only trouble about them is they expel the most foul-smelling air from both ends at the same time. <laughs> Apart from that, they're marvellous. No, the only trouble also is when they go down, which I wasn't expecting. They go down <laughs> the so obviously, that one's not used to having a ladder put up against them. Trying to teach you properly next time. Is he talking about the constitutional implications... <laughs> <laughs> Is he talking about the constitutional implications of Scottish devolution, or is it just a blowjob reference? <laughs> they unexpectedly go down. Barbara Carton? Oh, what a horrible thought. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's unexpected. <laughs> Mind you, she's bloody good at it. <laughs> she's got no teeth. <laughs> And super value at only two guineas. <laughs> <laughs> Had he been smoking some of those plants he normally talks to? <laughs> He's talking about his camels. Very good. Uh, very very good. good. Can you see his jaws are thick? Yeah. <laughs> well, they're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lucky guess. Don't get caught. <laughs> Well done, James. Yes, three points to you. Absolutely correct. That was the heir to the British throne describing an occasion at the 1979 Horse of the Year show when he rode a camel. <laughs> now, I know what you're all thinking. <laughs> There's no need to sink to that sort of level, all right? <laughs> so shut it. <laughs> and here he is trying to mount that camel using a ladder. In fact, Princess Anne won the Horse of the Year show in 1973. She was particularly strong in the swimwear section. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David has nine points and Gary has nine points. <laughs> Our next round is devoted to publicity photographs. We're going to show each team a publicity picture and ask them to tell us the reason behind it. David's team first, this is your photo. Okay. In case you're not clear, the one with the big ears and the large snout is Ian Rush. <laughs> that picture, basically, is the reason why Howard Wilkinson got sacked, you know, because, no, you know, people said... No, people said, you know, that they raised... They raised their eyebrows when I spent ten million on them three players, but when I spent four million on the elephant, they knew something was out of the world. <laughs> That's a go. <laughs> Is it you got that picture there, right? It's like the very next picture, the three of them blokes going, Ugh! Like that. <laughs> 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 if um, if Tony Adams is watching, Tony, that really is an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Merson standing next to him, that trunk makes Paul nervous. Because <laughs> <laughs> when an elephant snorts, there's not a lot left, is there? <laughs> it's just their new mascot, isn't it? I mean, every club has these mascots, and, uh, yeah, you know, and... they're just very funny, and the little kids sort of wave at them and go, oh, look, there's an unemployed actor in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you three points for that, absolutely correct. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Can I just thank you? Something that was grey with big ears, and I didn't get a mention. <laughs> Very calm. It's just one thing I did know. You've got five bellies and nine toes. <laughs> that was Leeds United announcing three new signings and a new mascot, Ellie the Elephant. So called, firstly, because their ground is Elland Road, and secondly, because it's an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> 
George Graham has become Leeds United's new manager in a deal worth £1 million. I didn't know they made envelopes that big. <laughs> <laughs> the FA aren't happy that Leeds have chosen Ellie the Elephant as their mascot because she has once been accused of taking a bun. <laughs> Right, Gary's team, it's uh, hands on your nuts, Vinnie Jones for you. <laughs> so what was the reason behind this photo? I think that'll be you next week, Gary, after you've been to the Wimbledon training ground. <laughs> Something to do with Wimbledon, not dead, typical tabloidy sort of, not... Not dead, not... Buried. 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 Um, We're dead but not buried. buried. <laughs> No, no. Yeah. Sorry, Nick, I thought he was having a fit there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to do the Heimlich manoeuvre. Yeah. <laughs> I would have done it on five bellies, but I ain't got the arms. <laughs> Is that what happens when you play out of your skin? Is it um, Vinnie Jones at the cast reunion of Dad's Army? <laughs> I don't, uh, unless he did a Christmas single with Karen Carpenter, I just... <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, she's dead. <laughs> uh, is that not the point? <laughs> it's not you, Jimmy, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, no bellies. <laughs> No, the photo was in fact taken in 1994 when Vinny turned down the Wimbledon captaincy, saying he didn't need a captain's armband to scare his opponents to death. Yeah. <laughs> Vinny Jones isn't as hard as he used to be. That bloke hasn't even got a single broken bone. <laughs> so at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine and David's team have 12. Right, it's back to familiar territory in this next round as our teams get to fondle famous sports people without fear of making it onto the front pages. It's Feel the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first, so if you'd like to take your Brian Foltz, get up there. You have 90 seconds to use your sense of touch and, if necessary, smell to identify a mystery sports person. Well, I hope it's not Bob Hoskins. <laughs> <laughs> OK, can we have our first mystery guest, please? OK, your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> it's Elvis. <laughs> Where are you? He's still standing. Can't be an Arsenal player. <laughs> to your sister, Five Belly. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Are you holding it here? <laughs> Not in this hand. Oh. He lives near Stoke. I've got darts. Oh, it's a darts player. Eric Rick. <laughs> Eric Rick Stone is correct. Well done. <laughs> Very quick. Well done, well done. OK, David and Lee. <laughs> At the end of that round, Gary's team have 12 and David's team have 15. We've reached our final round, the all-or-nothing sweat-drenched name game. The winning team goes first. That's David's team at the moment, so just hand this over. Uh, Lee's going to be doing the clues, I think. Got to get as many as you can in 90 seconds. OK. Your 90 seconds start now. Oh, wrong way round. Uh, athlete, 400 metre runner, civil medalist. Roger Black. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Tim... Uh, <laughs> Tim Miss Player. Tim Miss Player. Tim Henry. Correct. <laughs> Very Wrestler, good. stands alone in the field a lot, that's why he wrestles. Oh, haystack, Quite giant haystack. Quite big, yes. Oh, all right. uh, he's got the same surname as me and his first name isn't mine and he scores Jeffrey. three... <laughs> Correct. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Indian, uh, cricket, Indian cricket... Indian uh, cricket... Surname sounds like Ging Gang. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, Ganguly, uh, yeah. First Gangui, name? But, um, uh, first name begins... Sorav, Sorav Ganguly. Correct. The second name is like the bloke, I'm free! On the, yes, and the first name is uh, on the Rovers. 
Inman, Roy, Roy Inman. Roy correct. Inman. <laughs> you don't know who he is? Name is Dwight. Right. <laughs> Next one, he's like, uh, well, you butler. So, <laughs> correct. <laughs> Next one, you, his surname, you'd have a good old drink from him, you know, your Granwood, because it's an old drink. No, it's an Wind old drink. drink. And his first name is Horter. like, and he's a racehorse trainer, and it's, uh, and it's a drink, it's not Guinness, it's Whitbread. dark, and it's... No, Whitbread. Yeah. <laughs> Stout, Michael Stout, Michael Correct. Stout. Yes. <laughs> oh, piss off. <laughs> uh, Kick off. <laughs> that wasn't a clue. Oh, right, right, this one. <laughs> he's, he's, I haven't got a couple of Can't read it. Look. It's oh, and Weber Fatality, how do you say so? Get on with it. Silly of me. <laughs> right, the second one is like an 800 metre runner we used to have. The first name is, not Steve Ovid, the other one. Cram. Time's going. Cram. Yeah, Seb. Seb. and his surname Time's is. Going. Whistle. <laughs> Seb Whistle. That's it, like that. Seb Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you could have done this way. That's a fluke. I'm going to take one off for Tim Hennon. Oh, why? why? Because why? he said. He plays Tim this. <laughs> very I've got a speech I'm going to take one off the skipping with clear. the now of a patootie. I've That's got a speech impediment. OK. <laughs> so you've got 21. <laughs> Gary's team have got 12. To you. So nine to draw level, obviously, and ten break. to go ahead. <laughs> and your 90 seconds start now. Uh, his mate. Cousin. Paul Gascoigne. Correct. Um, oh, cricket player, shaved his head, got sunstroke. Black guy. Chris Lewis. Correct. Um, Oh, Johan's, uh, Johan's son plays for Manchester United. Geordie, Geordie, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, tennis player, mixed singles was her, you know. Just the chance to play some American accents, you know. Famous women's tennis player. Come on, you know, the most famous one. Martina Navratilova. Yes, Nambatilova. yes. Butch, square ball, smashing, what a job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, fast bowler, England. It's white, comes down and wins to not Leeds United. No. Jo uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, dear. A Brazilian woman footballer. It's a childish name for wimp, coward, you know. Don't, uh, no. Sissy. Sis sis yeah, sissy, sis very good. Oh, a Canadian runner. Uh, 60s folk singer. In the chilly hours and when it's <laughs> up and and a Second name, uh, English law court in the city. The old... Ba Donovan Bailey. Yeah. Um, oh, dear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a camel has one on camel. its back. Pump. How old you are is your age? Pumpage. Uh, yeah. Je boycott has got. Jeff Pumpage. Yeah. Jeff Pumpage. <laughs> <Jeff Humpage. laughs> <Yeah>, um, <laughs> it's Prime Minister's surname. John. Matt Major. <laughs> 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 uh, a Russian leader, something the terrible. Ivan. Ivan Major, correct. Uh, right. So, nice to the round saying. table. Nice to the round table. Famous one. Arthur. Sir. Lancelot. Yeah, first name. Second, his second name is not Fast Knob. Slow Knob. Slow Knob. Slow Knob. Well, that means dramatically at the end of the game, David's team have 21, but Gary's team are the winners with 23. <laughs> so thanks to David, Lee and Alistair, Gary, Rory and Jimmy. We're all off to the pub around the corner to meet Gazza. I'm Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. But of course they'll be back in, back in action on Thursday night at 10.15. A late night look at the charts next tonight on BBC One, it's Top of the Pops. There's one sport in which the world's top two players